This video is like a year in the making. Um, it has been a process to get to this point. So I've just realized how much work is actually ahead of me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, my name's Angus and today we're going to be doing something that I've wanted to do for about a year now. We're going to be redesigning the Hunger Games book cover. I first attempted to do this in like March of last year um, and it did not go well. So that video never saw the light of day. Thank God, but today I think it's finally time to give this another shot. I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I have some fresh ideas that I want to try and bring to fruition. So today I'm going to be designing two different covers. We're going to be designing one like modern twist, modern take on um, the Hunger Games book covers and the other will be more like a special anniversary edition with some nice foiling and yeah. Also considering the really positive response that um, my Percy Jackson redesign video had, I'm seriously considering getting these dust jackets professionally printed. So please let me know in the comments which edition you prefer and whichever one has like the majority I'm going to actually try and professionally print with like foiling and put it on my books just just to see just to see how it goes I think that'd be really fun and it could be a fun process to vlog so yeah um, alrighty so let's get into it with design number one which is the modern edition so as always I um, started off with a rough sketch of what I wanted the design to look like um, for this one I had the idea of using um, negative space to make the silhouette of Katniss uh, you can see the red outline of where she's supposed to be but yeah then I pretty much had to create each leaf shape from scratch with shape layers and then I used um, green shading on each to create the illusion of depth in the design I think it looks pretty nice uh, when it comes together. I mean, I'm not at all a graphic designer. This is just a bit of fun, but um, I tried really hard to stick to the limited green color palette. That way I could manipulate the colors further at the end. This design took centuries. Oh my God, they ended up being like close to 2000 shape layers, I think. Um, it was crazy. That's definitely the most uh, effort I've ever put into something. <laughs> it's just crazy. I did this over like multiple sessions over two weeks, I think. Yeah, it took so long. And to be honest, I'm not, thrilled with the result. It's definitely not my favorite. Um, this definitely isn't your typical dystopian book cover. Um, I definitely didn't follow that brief, but trying to design a dystopian cover in 2021 is crazy. Like there's just, they just don't really exist. So I went for this um, leafy approach instead. The original like vision I had in my head was like, you know, these swirling colors of abstract shapes to form the, the negative space with Katniss in the center. I always wanted to have Katniss in the center, but you know, when you're like trying to translate these images in your head to paper, it's <laughs> so impossible. So yeah, I ended up going with the leaves. Um, let's talk about the Hunger Games books. Which, which book in the trilogy is your favorite? I think mine, it's hard because my, I know my favorite movie is the second one. Catching Fire, I think is such a feat and book to a movie adaptions is just such a fantastic adaption. Um, I love that movie so much. Um, but books, I don't know, I really like the second book, but my fondest memories of Catching Fire are from the movies. So I don't know, it's kind of a hard one. Um, what about the new one? What do you guys think of um, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? I I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I know that's like the unpopular opinion, but I, I enjoyed getting to see a little bit more into the world of The Hunger Games before um, the first book. And um, I don't know, I, th I thought it was I thought it was good. I thought it built the world really well. And you know, Susan Collins is a, quite a talented writer. So I was pretty impressed. I'm gonna jump ahead and skip through some bits throughout this because it's just so long. Um, I like this design, but I feel like it's it's more of a catching fire cover. Um, it's quite tropical and I didn't really think about that until I got like halfway through, but um, that's fine. If I was to make this a real thing, I'd probably make this one catching fire and I'd do a similar thing for the other two covers. Um, you know, like for the first one, I do like a more woodsy scene with different foliage and then maybe for Mockingjay, I do more of like a burnt up and destroyed kind of forest setting. I did almost abandon this idea halfway through because I wasn't sure about it, but I am glad that I kept going because it did come together after 2000 shapes and I didn't want to waste 
all this effort. It's always hard when you go in a direction and get really stuck um, and then have to decide whether to pull out early if it's not working or really go through with it. And I just went through with this and yeah, I am happy with it. It's not my favorite design I've done, but I think it's quite unique and it feels symbolic of the books, even if it feels more like a Catching Fire cover than a Hunger Games cover. I think it did come through. I did have this whole color palette that I was going to use that you can see to the left um, with these pinks and oranges and bright colors, but I ended up having to pair it right back to um, kind of make the negative space really pop. I think if I used those, it might've taken from the whole idea a bit, but I don't know, it would have been cool to see them in action. And then once everything was set, I um, darkened the image a bit and toned down the greens. Um, I added a vignette and some red embers. I, I really like those. I think they look really moody. And then the text, I literally <laughs> copied the font I used for my Percy Jackson design. Um, I was trying to find something new, but I just, I just thought it fit really well with the whole like Roman mythological inspiration that the books have, um, this kind of archeological font. Um, I would have liked to spend a bit more time on the font and text, but I just ran out of time. I gave the text a little gold foil overlay. Um, that's pretty much it. Alrighty, and that is the final product for my modern edition of the Hunger Games cover. Um, I like this design. I think it turned out okay. It was really hard to come up with a dystopian book cover for something that's appropriate for like 2021 because dystopians kind of died out in YA five years ago. So it's interesting. I don't really think this looks particularly stereotypically like a dystopian book cover. I think it's more of a, I don't even know, lots of leaves. That's what it is. Yeah, definitely not my favorite, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So now let's move on to design number two, which is the special anniversary edition. So for my special anniversary edition of The Hunger Games, I originally had this sketched out like a bunch of Mockingjays circling the title, but it felt a bit messy. So instead I drew up this design, which I think is nice and symmetrical and feels a bit fancier. I really like it. Anyway, for this one, I knew I always wanted either a gold or copper or silver foil design on like a deep, navy blue matte background. Um, this is always set in stone. So the whole process is just me translating this sketch into a digital gold shape. Um, this was actually the first design I did. So you'll see me experimenting with the gold foil at the end of the video. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward this one. It only took me a few sessions over like a week. And then I just spent a bit coming back to it every now and then and doing little tweaks. Um, I ended up listening to the Catching Fire soundtrack while making this because some of the songs on that soundtrack are phenomenal. Um, also, Mockingjay Part 1 has a killer soundtrack. There are so many special editions of <laughs> books these days that, that use this 2D minimalistic foiling design um, that it was kind of hard to try and make something that stood out. But I think really pairing it back helped. Um, I didn't want to go too overboard because sometimes these designs can be just too much. There's some special editions that I really hate because it's just so overwhelming that it's not even eye-catching anymore. Um, it just, yeah. I'd love to make a cover with this style for the other books in this series and have the spines line up to form some kind of like interconnected design across them in like a nice gold or copper foil. I think that would just look so good. Um, as you can probably tell, I prefer this design over the first one. I just think it has so much more of like a professional and stylish feel. I just think it's a lot nicer and I think it would look really nice in photos and I can just see it physically printed. I actually got some samples from a printing company I'm thinking about working with uh, to print these designs and oh my God, the foiling looks so pretty and there's so many colors to choose from and the paper stock, there is literally hundreds to choose from. It's gonna be so hard to pick one. I'm, I've narrowed it down a bit, but there's just there's, there's so much stuff. They sent me a box full of different samples and I've got options for gloss and spot UV and letter pressing. It's just so much to consider. It is quite overwhelming. You know, when you have like too much choice, <laughs> I, wish, I wish there was less choice just to make my job a little bit easier, but I don't know, it's nice that they can do so much. So that's really exciting. Um, I've got to consider like how thick I want the paper to be. Like it's just so much, um, but it's exciting. I'm really excited about it. I actually really liked having the title and author um, text all contained into one little box in the center. Um, I didn't really want to make it the focus of 
the design and so I liked having it um, quite minimal you know like you can identify what this book is without seeing the title and I like that you know you see the bird and you see the arrows and the leaves and it kind of makes sense um, so yeah, I was really happy to have the <laughs> title kind of compartmentalized into this one box. And I think I would keep that the same throughout the three. Um, just the same placement, same size, just standardized. Um, doing the Mockingjay uh, was super tricky. Um, I spent so long trying to make this bird look passable. It was so bad at the start. Um, I ended up bringing in an outline to follow and adjust for the tail because Mockingjay tails just don't make sense. Um, the like, <laughs> the proportions, I, it was so hard. Anyway, uh, it's the whole thing I did here, I ended up scratching, like the whole tail I ended up simplifying later, but it's about the process, you know, trial and error. Like you don't get to the final outcome without failing a few times. Um, even like the feet were tough, like, like having three toes, how does that work? I don't know, I've never really done birds before. So that was hard. And then the beak and the eye, getting the eye placement right. And even like the head feathers, it was all just such a like battle <laughs> in trying to make this bird not look stupid. Um, but I think we got there in the end. It just took a lot of adjustments. Um, and I think the final product really like matches the design. I think it fits in and um, I am happy with it. Oh my God, hopefully I am a lot better at animal anatomy, but we will see. So yeah, now I'm just adding the foiling. It's just a bunch of different compounding effects over an abstracted image that um, then uses a clipping mask over the design and then adjusted the colors to a more coppery tone. That's it. Alrighty, and that is the final product for my special anniversary edition of the Hunger Games book cover. Um, I, I think this one is pretty neat. It's quite simple, but I think it's effective with some really nice copper foiling on a nice matte paper stock. I think it would look beautiful and really shine on a bookshelf. So yeah, you can probably tell which one I'm leaning towards but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, I'd love to do this design with like matching spines for the rest of the books in the series that all kind of form a nice mural together with the copper foiling. I think that would look really nice. Yeah, I think it would be beautiful. Okay, well that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Um, let me know what you think in the comments of these covers, which one you prefer. And yeah, like I said, I'm gonna try and get one of these professionally printed and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so let me know. Um, thank you guys so much for watching again and I'll see you next time. Bye.